Well, hello and welcome to another episode on the channel. I'm really pleased to see you here once again. Today, I'm going to revisit something I've touched on before and probably because recently I've been shooting a lot of my nightscapes with different focal length lenses. And I've got a collection of them here and I wanna go through some of the reasons for my mindset and how I think about when I'm going out to shoot so the majority of people would shoot fairly wide angle lenses for nightscapes. I would suggest between 14 to 18 millimeters, probably 14, 15, 16 would be the most common because there's a lot of lenses uh, with that particular focal length. I'm talking full frame there. If you're using a crop sensor camera, like say a Canon 70D, 80D or a Nikon 5300 or 7100, 7200, something like that, you might go maybe to the to Kina 11 to 16 or 11 to 20 uh, to get that wide angle focal length. Now, some of you would already know this, but I rarely shoot my general nightscapes under about 20 millimeters. So I wanna sort of run through some of my mindset for that and also go through these other lenses. You, you may remember a little while ago, I did a, a comparison with four different focal length lenses, and you can see some of that here now. So I went through the 14 millimeter, 20 millimeter, 35 millimeter, and 50 millimeter focal lengths. And I shot the same subject with pretty much the same settings for each of those camera and lens combinations. I used the same lens body, it was a Nikon D750 at the time, and you could see the different results with those images. More recently, and you already know this if you've been watching my channel, I've been shooting a little bit more with the 35 and the 50 millimeter focal length lenses. Now, I wanna go through in this video, firstly, why I would do that, why would I choose to shoot with the 35 or the 50 millimeter lens, and secondly, when would I do that? And I think both of those questions need to be answered to get a, a clearer picture of what I'm talking about. So firstly, I'm just gonna show you some of the gear that I've got here. Firstly, I've got my Nikon Z6 camera body here, and mounted on this is my Nikon brand 50 millimeter F1.8 S. So that is a native Z mount lens. Now I haven't had this very long, and I've only shot a few uh, images with it, to be honest. But so far, I, I really like it. Now, the S lenses that I've tested, I've only tested three of them at this point in time, have all been really sharp, really good quality images, really good quality lenses. I love the, the construction. I love the way the focus ring moves on this. Uh, having said that, coming from the, the F mount lenses, which I've got a few of those here as well, um, it just takes a little bit of getting used to. There's a couple of things the focus throws different. Uh, and, and because these are completely fly-by-wire lens, there's no markings on here to tell you when you're at infinity focus. So that, for a lot of people, that's a deal breaker. They don't like that. They don't like fly-by-wire lenses. Now, you know, with the mirrorless camera technology that we have uh, all come to, um, to know now, pretty much all of those lenses are fly-by-wire. Uh, so I'm using Panasonic uh, cameras and lenses to film what we're doing here today and what I normally do. Uh, and all of those lenses, it's a mirrorless camera, and all of those lenses are fly-by-wire. So I guess I'm a little bit used to it. Uh, now, having had the Z6 for quite a while now, being a mirrorless camera, I, I suppose I'm, I'm coming to terms with some of the, the differences and the idiosyncrasies that come with that difference. Up until now, I've been using, as you know, the FTZ adapter. Now, you can see that here. This is on my... 20 millimeter f 1.8 lens. Now the FTZ adapter works really well with the Z6. So of course these lenses were designed not for mirrorless cameras, they're designed for the older um, DSLRs. Uh, but I, I found that they work really, really well. So I'm happy with the, the setup with the FTZ. And some of you will be using other brands. You might be using Sony. Now most of the Sony cameras these days are mirrorless. Uh, Olympus, they're all mirrorless, Fuji, mirrorless, and of course the new Canon, the EOS series, uh, they're mirrorless as well. So there's no doubt that that's where everyone's going and they're moving in that direction. But these adapters are critical because the adapter is necessary to adapt uh, the older collection of lenses that you may have to the newer camera bodies. Okay, so we've got that out of the way. 
So the question today's video is about focal length lenses and why and when I would use them. So let's let's go to the why first off. As I've already mentioned, the 20 millimeter focal length here is my favorite focal length. Now for most of you people watching this video, I would suggest that perhaps your favorite focal length is a bit wider than that. Um, now, if you use a 14 mm, 15 mm, 16 mm lenses, there's plenty of those around and they are great lenses, don't get me wrong. In fact, I've got one here. This is the Nikon 14 to 24 f2.8. Now, this is a classic landscape lens and fantastic for nightscapes as well. And I use this lens quite a lot for certain applications, but not so much these days for shooting single images. So that's part of the why that we're going to get to in a minute. I think the reason a lot of people use these ultra wide angle lenses is because they're actually, it's easier to get the shot. Uh, and you will find you'll get more in, you'll get more of the sky, you can get more of the landscape in the shot. Um, and I think you can generally have a longer shutter speed. So we all know the stars are moving. So the more you zoom in, uh, even using 20 mil, 35 and especially 50 mil, you notice the stars moving much quicker. So therefore, the shutter speed has to come down to accommodate those longer focal length lenses. Now, I can uh, probably my best way of describing that is if any of you have ever had a look at the moon, for example, through a telescope, and it doesn't have to be a big telescope, just any telescope, you will soon find out that if that telescope is fixed on the moon, you can actually physically see the moon moving through the frame. That's because the, the, the stars and the moon and everything else is, is moving because of the rotation of the Earth. And the longer focal length of that telescope magnifies that movement. So therefore, the longer our focal length lenses are, the more movement is magnified. And so therefore, we have to keep our shutter speed down lower or shorter to accommodate that so we can still get sharp stars. So that's one of the reasons why wide angle lenses are, are more popular. And I think when most people begin their nightscape or astrophotography, they will start by using wide angle lenses, the widest lens they can get. In fact, the majority of people recommending equipment for nightscape images will say to you, get the widest focal length lens you can get. And that's, that's good advice. But for me, I, I, I'm very bored with that focal length. Um, and I don't mean that in any derogatory way at all, because I still have this lens that I use a lot, but I much prefer the images I'm getting from my longer focal lengths. Now, uh, why is that? I'm gonna show you some images now that I've shot with the 14 millimeter lens. So these images that you're looking at now are mostly single shots because now when I started doing nightscapes a number of years ago now, I was using the wide angle lens, 14 millimeter predominantly. Now this being a 14 to 24, I can change that to some degree. But the images you're seeing now on the screen, uh, they're taken with that lens. Now they're great images. And some of them are ones that are still my favorites to this very day. After a little while, I toyed with the idea of I wanted a faster aperture lens. Now, this 14 to 24 is an f 2.8. Now, in most people's standards, an f 2.8 lens is a fast aperture lens. But when it comes to nightscape images, I think faster aperture lenses, the better. So therefore you start to look for f1.8s, f1.4s, perhaps f2s, there's a few of those around as well. So I, I went searching, what is there that I can use that's faster than f1.8? Well, at the time, the, the fastest aperture lens for my camera, which was the D750, in the Nikon range is the, this one, the 20 millimeter f1.8. And I absolutely fell in love with this lens. You know, to be absolutely honest with you, when I first bought this lens, I had not ever seen one image taken of the night sky with this lens. So there was a little bit of risk involved in shooting uh, with this lens because I thought, oh, no, it might be full of coma, it might be full of aberrations, it might be a terrible lens because it's quite light. A friend of mine actually at the time was using this lens as one of his kit in a, a wedding kit. So he's a wedding photographer and he had the 
20 mil f1.8. And I said, how often do you use that? And he said, hardly ever. Because as you know, wedding photographers tend to go for more portrait lenses like the 50 mil or the 85 or 105. So it got me thinking, I had, a, I had a look at that lens and I thought, gee, it's small and light. That is fantastic, a really portable lens. And now I'll show you the images that I've taken with this lens and there's hundreds of them, literally hundreds, because this quickly became my go-to lens for nightscape images. And I've talked at length in the past about the 20 millimeter lens. Nothing real, more really has to be said about that lens. I absolutely love it. So once I started using the 20 millimeter lens, I noticed a few things. Firstly, the, the, the big bugbear that I had with the 14 millimeter lens was the wide angle distortion. So things that were straight, particularly on the edges of the frame, started to lean in. Now you've all seen this, trees lean in, buildings lean, people lean, cars, whatever it is you're shooting they lean and anyone who's shot real estate photography knows what I'm talking about. It's really awkward getting the angles right with these wide angle lenses. Uh, and you know, in some landscape environments, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, trees are not straight usually anyway. So if they lean a little bit, who cares? But I was noticing a lot of things that were meant to be straight that weren't straight. Now, when I started using the 20 millimeter lens, I realized, hang on, that, that wide angle distortion is far less exaggerated. And I was pleasantly surprised by that. Then I decided, well, gee, I wonder what it would be like to use a little bit longer focal length. So I started looking around and that's when this lens came into my position. This is the Sigma Art 35 millimeter F 1.4. It's got the, this is the F mount, so it fits the D750 or it fits the Z6 with the FTZ adapter. Now, this was one of the first of the Sigma Art Series lenses that came on the market. The Sigma Art Series lenses are a very high quality um, lens from the brand Sigma. And I found this lens to be tremendous. Now it is a, it's heavier and bigger than the 20 millimeter, but at the same time, it's not anywhere near as big and heavy as this 14 to 24, which I was using before. Uh, so it doesn't take as much room in the camera bag um, and but it is 35 mil so the 35 millimeter lens when would I use that well essentially what I'm doing by putting a 35 millimeter on is I'm bringing my field of view in from say the 20 and certainly bringing it in a long way from the 14 so a 14 millimeter field of view might be this big the 20 might be this big, the 35 might be this big. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm not seeing as much real estate in my frame. So how does that affect me for my nightscapes? Well, it affects me greatly because I'm not getting anywhere near as much of the sky in my shot. Uh, and of course, the sky is our main point of interest in our nightscape images. Well, hang on a minute. That's not quite how I see things. Now, um, my main point of interest in my nightscapes is actually, now get this, is actually the foreground subject. And what I'm doing is actually framing that with the gorgeous, brilliant Milky Way or stars or whatever it might be that we're seeing in the night sky. Now that's a little bit of a mind shift uh, to what the majority of nightscape photographers are doing. What they're essentially looking at usually doing is just getting as much of the sky as they can and hoping for a decent foreground. Now, I'm looking at things a little bit different to that. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with any of these options. I'm just telling you what, what my option is. So what I'm tending to do is looking for foreground subjects. Now you've seen all the videos that I've produced about searching and driving around looking for foregrounds to shoot and trees and cars and buildings and all sorts of things. And in my mind when I'm doing that, I'm thinking now, can I get underneath this subject enough to use one of these longer focal length lenses? And can I frame that tree and still get the sky that I want behind it? Okay, now I want you to keep that in mind because it comes into play a whole lot more depending on what time of year you're shooting. So with the 35 millimeter, you can see some of the images I've shot with this lens right now. And the first thing you notice is not so much the foreground, the foreground looks pretty good, but it's the background. The stars and the Milky Way appear so much closer. Wow, it's almost like a different scene. It's, it's brought it much closer in. It's compressed the background. 
And therein lies my number one reason for choosing these longer focal length lenses for my nightscapes. Now, a lot of people will say to you, well, I love using the longer focal length lenses, but I only use them for panoramas because then I can actually still get the wide angle, but um, I'm able to use the, the better quality lenses. Like some of these prime lenses are really high quality and they're because they're designed for portraiture. So the panorama concept is okay. In fact, that's, I've done that plenty of times myself, particularly recently, I've shot quite a few panos and I generally shoot panos with either the 20 millimeter focal length or the 35 millimeter. Rarely, in fact, I can't think of ever shooting a panorama with a 14 millimeter lens. Now, I know a lot of you guys will do that and I'm not saying you shouldn't, I'm just saying that that's not what I normally do. I much prefer to get uh, a little bit longer, so the 20 or the 35 and shoot panoramas that way. Now remember, this, these are both prime lenses, they don't zoom. That's just a 20, that's just a 35. Uh, one of the other reasons I love prime lenses is the simplicity. Now, it doesn't matter what the focal length, could be 14, could be 15, 17, 18, 20, doesn't matter, 24, simplicity. You're not bumping the, the zoom ring accidentally when you're focusing, which I've done, <laughs> so I know exactly what that feels like. Um, and the other thing is the, the focus ring on these lenses is generally quite large and really easy to use. So that's another reason I love these prime lenses. Okay, so we've established a couple of facts here. I like to shoot the longer focal length lenses when I can get a, a foreground subject framed up and still have enough of the night sky to make the subject interesting. Okay, when would I use a 50 millimeter lens? A 50 mil millimeter field of view is far less than my 35. Uh, there are plenty of occasions where I just can't use a 50 millimeter lens. Why? Because perhaps I might have uh, the ability to line up the foreground subject, whatever that may be, but I just can't get enough sky to make it into what I really want it to be. Um, so what do I do then? Well, I'll tell you what I honestly would do is choose one of these other lenses. The only reason I would use a 50mm lens is if all of these elements line up in a row and I say, yes, I can use a 50mm lens. Now, why would I choose a 50mm lens? One, this is a 50mm f1.8, it's a fast aperture lens, lets a lot of light in. Two, it really compresses the background so that Milky Way comes in really, really close. Now, I'm gonna show you a few images I've taken with the 50 millimeter focal length lenses. It's almost like you can, you can reach out and touch it. And that's the thing that I love most about the 50 millimeter focal length lens. I hope that has made some sense to you guys um, because I don't wanna just rattle on here about equipment and you still don't get an understanding of what I'm trying to say. I guess in a nutshell what I'm saying is there's a place for all of these lenses. Now one of the things that I love to use the very extreme ultra wide angle lenses for, for example this 14 millimeter, is time lapse. Now any of you who have ever done time lapse you will understand that when you crop it down to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is our standard television aspect, uh, we're losing a, a fair bit of the top and the bottom of the image. So we're, we're keeping the width but losing the height. So therefore, my 14 millimeter lens is losing the top and bottom. So it's, it's not 14 millimeters anymore. So if I was shooting with a 50 millimeter lens, I'm losing way too much of the image. Uh, so using time lapse, and you can see some of the ones I've done here, pretty much all of these time lapses have been done with the 14 millimeter focal length because I know I'm gonna be losing real estate and, and I can't afford to lose too much and still get the effect of the movement of the stars. So that's another thing that uh, the 14 is great for. So I hope you can see from these illustrations why I would use these different focal length lenses and when I might think about using them. Now, just on that, recently I did a shoot of a single tree sitting on top of a hill and I used the 50 millimeter Nikon lens, this one here, to shoot that. Now, I went through that video at the time illustrating my reasoning for that. I knew I wanted to use a 50 millimeter focal length and I was therefore needing a tree that was on top of a hill rather than low down in a valley or something like that because then I can actually get the angle 
underneath and have just the sky behind. I haven't got other trees or any other landscape, I've just got the sky. And what that does, it actually gives time for the Milky Way core, in this case, to rise up behind the tree. And therefore I know that I can get the whole tree, I can spend my time framing up that tree knowing that the core is going to come up behind the tree. So for example, you could get a real angle on a tree up a hill like this and the, and the core is up on a fairway, fairway from the ground normally, but because of the angle I can still get my 50mm lens to pick it up. So that leads me to one last thing that I haven't touched on yet, and that is uh, the simple fact that using this 50mm lens or even the 35 a lot of the time, I can't do it at certain times of the year and get that same composition. It's just impossible. Now you guys know, one of the reasons you use the 14mm or the 15 or 16mm lenses is to get more real estate. So therefore the Milky Way can be quite high in the sky and you can still capture it because you've got so much of an angle on your lens here. Now with my 20mm lens, I find that to be the case sometimes, that I just chop off a little bit of it, but I think 20 millimeter for me is still the sweet spot because I can capture a lot of the Milky Way and I shoot with this all year round. Of course, when the Milky Way core is directly overhead and it is like that here in Australia for a fair bit of the, the middle of the Milky Way season, then it's pretty hard to capture it with any, any lens to get it all in. Uh, but I don't seem to have too much trouble. So anyway, I'm hoping that all of those illustrations have given you some uh, something to go by and to sort of give you a, a reference point, I suppose, to give you, you know, um, make a decision of whether you want to use any of these longer focal length lenses. So I'd encourage you to give it a go. One of the things that I haven't mentioned yet, and that is the fact that using these longer focal length lenses is a lot more challenging. But I can tell you, with challenge comes reward. You won't always get it right. You'll mess up the focus or you'll mess up something, whatever it may be, but when you get it right, you'll look at that image and say, I couldn't possibly get that clarity of detail with my wide angle lens, it's just not there. Because when you start magnifying that Milky Way and the stars and so forth, you will see so much more detail. The Milky Way just looks absolutely sparkling with these longer focal lengths. I hope that has been some sort of benefit to you. I appreciate you spending the time here listening to me talk about all this stuff and uh, I'll look forward to reading the comments down below. Happy to chat any time about any of this stuff as you know. So I'll see you next time under the stars, hopefully somewhere great. All right, I'll see you later.